I'm on Normanby Island today, a little off the coast of Papua New Guinea. That's the main island in the background over there. And it's a classic Miocene arc environment. There's a huge ophiolite belt running down the middle of the main island and it comes across the strait there and goes right under my feet here. So there's a really huge structure right here. And right on the coast here where that structure comes across the island, there's a hot spring. Now the water coming up out of the spring here is at about 50 degrees C. Now you can see from all the orange and yellow crusts on the bottom of the pool that the water is precipitating lots of iron hydroxides. The bright orange colours suggest there's probably some arsenic and antimony coming out with the iron and probably some mercury because there's lots of ultramafics here in this ophiolite suite. The gas bubbling up out of the pool is probably mostly CO2 because it doesn't smell too bad. There's not a lot of H2S or SO2 in that. But there must be some sulphur in it because I can see some white sulphates growing around the water's edge. So it's typical of what you see on top of low sulphidation epithermal systems. Despite the extreme conditions, there are some plants that have managed to adapt. The sedges growing along the banks of the pool are very tolerant of acid groundwater. And there are some green algae that are doing very nicely here in the water that would cook most other plants. The temperature of the pool and the concentration of the dissolved elements varies quite a lot depending on how much rainwater is diluting the system from upstream. As you can see, it rains quite a lot here. But creatures attracted by the rich supply of nutrients can easily be caught out when the rain stops and the pools return to hot pot conditions. Now I've been mapping here for a couple of weeks and in the mountains up there behind me, we found a whole series of veins that are typical of what you find in the far periphery of a porphyry system. They've got propolitic alteration around the outside and some quartz sulfide infill. And then there's another series of low sulfidation epithermal veins that are typical of what you find in the upper levels of a system, coliform crustiform banded quartz. And then there's another set of high sulfidation veins that overprint those porphyry veins. All of that's happening a thousand meters above us up there in the mountains and yet here we are at sea level and there's a low sulfidation system at the very top of the system operating right now. The lesson here is that in arc environments the systems evolve very rapidly. The topography builds up very rapidly and gets eroded away very rapidly. On May 18th 1980 the landslide and eruption of Mount St Helens removed about 3 billion cubic metres of rock and 400 metres of altitude in just four minutes. The entire mountain grew in about 40,000 years and the lava dome in the crater after the eruption added about 100 million cubic metres in just four years, as you can see in this time lapse from the USGS. And the hydrothermal systems evolve quickly, they live and die and new systems overprint older ones. So you can get deep parts of the system pushed up to high elevations and exposed at the current surface, while younger, high level parts of the same system are developing at lower elevations. So just because you find a deep part of the system exposed at a high elevation, don't write off the areas of lower altitude around that for high level parts of the system. They can develop at the same time or later on in the development of the same system at lower elevations, just as we're seeing here. Ooh, my feet are getting hot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 